you know, we talked about it on Monday, that when a pulse comes into a free end, we pretend that the reflected pulse is coming back uh, on the same side. And that means that when they meet in the middle, I get an overshoot. The amplitude is twice that of the original pulse. This is the part that is hard. If that end is truly free, how do I do that? How do I make a, an end that is truly free? Um, well, one way to do it is to tie it to a, a ring that is massless and frictionless. Okay, if it were massless and frictionless, uh, that end would be free. Now, if I look at that ring, if it's frictionless, the only force that the rod can put on it is a normal force. If I look at Newton's second law, if the mass of the ring is zero, that means the net force on the ring has to be zero. Well, the only other force on that ring is the string pulling on it. In order to make that net force zero, the tension by the string on the ring has to point opposite the normal force. Well, the normal force, by definition, has to be perpendicular to the rod, and that means that your string has to always come in perpendicular to the rod. If you try to do this with a free end, it will not let you. It will instantly, in a blink of an eye, before you can even see it, go there. If you try to do that, it will instantly, in a blink of an eye, go there. We call that the boundary condition. Now you'll find in that last page of the tutorial homework that one of, your, one of your pulses violates this boundary condition. It's a pulse with a kink in it. And that can't be. You cannot violate Newton's second law. And so what that indicates is that in real life, we don't have pulses that have sharp kinks in them. When you made pulses in the lab, you never saw one with a sharp kink they were all rounded. And that's the point that they're trying to get at on that last, top of the last page in the tutorial homework. Okay, now we're out of time. We'll see you on Friday, people.